The Buccaneers are one of the most exciting teams to look at in this 2020 offseason. With free agency and the NFL draft behind us, I don't think there's a team I am more unsure about than the Buccaneers. Yes, the addition of Tom Brady is what has dominated the headlines during free agency, and and the combination of him with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, who are, for my money, the best wide receiver duo in the league, is incredibly exciting. And, of course, the addition of Gronk has every football fan wondering what the possibilities are for this season. So in this video, I'm going to dive into the question marks I have for this Buccaneers offense. While to many that may be Tom Brady, I think we know what we're getting from the 43-year-old Tom Brady. At this point in his career, I expect him to do what he has done in New England for the past two or three years, manage the game at an incredibly high level. That's not an insult by any means. I would argue that's exactly what he did in the 2018 season that ended with him hoisting the Lombardi Trophy. Instead, what I want to focus on is the running game for this Tampa Bay offense. In this video, we will take a look at the backs that are already on the roster, as well as the addition of Keyshawn Vaughn in the third round of the NFL Draft. I'm going to tell you what I expect from this unit in 2020 and who on the Bucks roster I would expect to have the biggest impact in the running game this season. And stick around to the end to hear my wild card take on a player that could end up being the steal of your fantasy football draft. So the first thing I want to do is actually look at the offensive line and how the Bucks ran last season. So according to Sharp Football Stats, which is where I get the majority of my stats for this video, the majority of the runs for the Buccaneers came off of the center. Okay, so 140 runs came off the center, which makes sense. Ryan Jensen is one of the best centers in the league. And what this really tells us is how the Buccaneers want to run the football. Now, granted, there's going to be a lot of changes this season, and this could change quite a bit. But at the end of the day, the Bucks' interior offensive line didn't change a whole lot. The addition of Werfs in the first round may make running off the left tackle a little bit more common for the Bucks next season. But I expect to see the running backs running through the middle. So now that we have a good idea of the way the Buccaneers want to run the football, let's break down the two running backs that carried the load in 2019. Ronald Jones and Peyton Barber. And courtesy of Sharp Football Stats, it's broken down based on where they ran. But on a whole, Ronald Jones rushed for 724 yards on 172 carries. And Peyton Barber came just behind Jones with 154 carries for 470 yards. As you can see on the screen, Ronald Jones dominated Peyton Barber in pretty much every rushing stat that I could find for these two runners. Ronald Jones was clearly the best running back, both statistically and when watching the film. I'll be honest, the Buccaneers running game was unimpressive last season. And while I'm going to look at Ronald Jones and what he brings to the table, after watching the film, Peyton Barber's performance is reflected by his stats. He was clearly the second best running back in this duo that was never really very good to begin with. I don't really expect Peyton Barber to have a big impact in this 2020 season. We know what we're getting from Peyton Barber. And he simply doesn't consistently take advantage of what the offensive line blocks from. He rarely, if ever, is able to create a play, and he isn't a special runner physically. Now, he is consistent, and I can find you film of far worse players around the league, but he will always be a guy that teams are looking to replace. So for those reasons, I'm going to skip over Peyton Barber in this video. So moving on, let's take a look at Ronald Jones. When we look at Ronald Jones, I see a guy who does a lot of things right. He hits the hole, has a good lateral quickness, and runs hard between the tackles. And I think this first clip shows both sides of what makes Ronald Jones as a running back. You're going to first see the defensive tackle uh, sidestep to fill in that A gap here. And I I think you're going to notice why that is so important. The offensive line, more often than not, does guard pretty well. But this defensive tackle for the uh, Titans kind of gets past his block. But Ronald Jones is able to sidestep him pretty quickly here and locate the enormous hole filled in by his, his offensive line. As you can see, this offensive guard is pretty much blocking from his knees, so he's not really able to get a good block, and Ronald Jones should see that. Right here, I would expect Ronald Jones to be leaning to the right and just trying to uh, bust this upfield as far as he can. It looks like he gets a little bit tripped up and just isn't able to make what I thought looks like a really good opportunity for him. As you can see right here, this, this is where I think he probably has an opportunity to make a lot of yards in this play. And some of the great running backs do that. 
Ronald Jones is not a great running back, and I think his floor is being a really consistent good player that just never hits that next gear. And that's unfortunate because coming out of college, he's definitely a guy that I expected to hit that. But as you can see here, the linebackers for the Titans are able to catch up to him, which is kind of a, a theme when you talk about Ronald Jones. He rarely ever hits that big play. He's rarely ever able to, to make more than what was had. He can create a couple yards here and there, but he's not consistently busting out long runs. And, and the Titans here, while a very good defense, and it might not be 100% fair to compare him to the Titans, but that's what the NFL is. It's it's a lot of really good defenses, and sometimes you just have to rise above. In fact, this play against the Panthers on Thursday night is the only time I really saw him create yards after contact. And, and while I know there are more examples of him doing that, after watching the three games that I watched for him, this is the only play that I saw that really got me excited about Ronald Jones, seeing him make an actual play. Everything else is kind of cookie cutter. Yes, he can hit the hole. Yes, he does his job fairly well, but he doesn't get more than what is asked for him, and he doesn't do things like this consistently. Here you're going to see him run through a defensive end crashing down on him. That was just a little bit too late. Show a little bit of patience to run through the traffic here, which I love to see, and power through the tackle at the third level to get as many yards as he can. I want to see that Ronald Jones consistently, and I think he has the ability to unlock that and become a good player, but to be honest, He's coming into his third year in the NFL, and if he doesn't start to show it soon, he kind of just is what he is on film, and so far, it's not special. For me, it was far more common to see plays like this one. Now, granted, this is against one of the best linebackers of all time, one of the best linebackers I've personally ever seen play the game. Luke Keekley is here to meet him in the hole and just levels him for a modest gain. And I understand that it's kind of hard to compare him to the future Hall of Famer, Luke Keekley playing on the other side of him. But again, I, I watched this play, and, and if you look at it, to me, he looks like he's preparing for the hit almost the second he gets the ball, right? Uh, there, There's no desire to ever really create something new. There's a lane over here that I feel like if, if he was maybe more creative as a runner he would have he would have located and tried to bounce outside he's never going to beat Luke Keekley in the hole and I understand that's kind of asking a lot for a guy to recognize that and say oh this is Luke Keekley I'm going to try and avoid him as opposed to just running over him but that's his brand he he's a guy that wants to run you over he's not going to create more than what's there to be had and if you have a good linebacker that's not going to miss the tackle Luke Keekley is a prime example but there's a lot of other guys in the league that don't have to be at Luke Keekley level to be able to bring down a running back consistently in the hole. That's what you're supposed to be able to do as an NFL linebacker, so I have to consistently believe he's going to see that. Jones is simply not explosive enough to take advantage of the defense. He is hard-nosed, always falls forward, and plays the position at a serviceable level most of the time. But maybe these last two plays are the most damning for Jones. The Bucks actually blocked really well against the Colts, and here are two examples where I see he has great lanes. He, he has opportunities, and he creates yards. He, he gets four to five and, I believe, ten yards in this clip specifically, but I want more. I, I, I want to see a, a running back that is that has his offensive line block ten yards, and he gets 20, it's like in this clip right here. I see a play where Ronald Jones should be able to break this off into the third level. The safety, who you can barely see at the top of your screen, should be the player to bring Ronald Jones down. Instead, he's not able to beat the linebacker to the hole, and he gets brought down for a modest gain. Yes, it's a gain. Yes, he falls forward. And on the stat sheet, it looks good. It helps his average yards per carry. But at the end of the day, that's not what he should have gotten from this play. That's not what I want my NFL running back to get from this play. That's the issue with Ronald Jones. He's going to be good. He's going to be consistent. And he's going to be really okay. But don't you want a little bit more than okay from your NFL caliber running back? I know it sounds like I'm being hard on Ronald Jones, and, and I guess I am. At the NFL level, it isn't always enough to do your job, especially at the running back position. There's always another guy who's going to be looking to take your job. Good is not good enough, and for Ronald Jones, I think his time as a starting running back in the NFL is over. 
mostly because the Bucks just drafted a guy by the name of Keyshawn Vaughn that is primed and ready to take over the starting job for Tampa Bay. So what I have on the screen right now for you guys is Keyshawn Vaughn's skill chart and grade that I had for Keyshawn Vaughn coming into the draft, right? So if you follow my channel, you know that I have an entire program built to help me grade draft prospects. And the running back position is the, is the position I'm probably most proud of when it comes to this program because I think it really fleshes out everything that a running back is good at, bad at, and I think it, it defines what a running back skill set is going to be. So as you can see, he had his highest grade at the as a power back. I, I grade the player on the same skills, and I have a program that spits out three numbers. The overall score, his, his ability as a true scat back, and his ability as a power back. Uh, and that just helps me kind of define the player on a more fleshed out way than just giving one overall score for everybody. So for Keyshawn Vaughn, he had a much better power back score than anywhere else. He's going to be a guy that can run through the tackles. And if you look at the skill chart, he has a lot of the same characteristics that the Buccaneers will want based on the, the stats that we saw from Sharp Football Analysis. You're going to see a guy who has good pad level and balance. He's good between the tackles. Uh, he, he consistently breaks tackles. That 7.5 is a very good score, by the way. It's out of 9. His power score is very, very very good at 7.8. He has pretty good pass protection, so that's not something I'm going to worry about. It's not something that I'm going to talk about in this video. Overall, when you look at Keyshawn Vaughn, there's not a lot of huge negatives for me, and that's awesome because this is a guy who, who didn't have a lot of opportunities, but when you saw him have the opportunities, he did really well. So let's get into the film here. So in this first clip, it shows everything that I love about Keyshawn Vaughn in, in one play. He shows off his lateral quickness, breaks a tackle, and falls forward for 10 yards. That's the simple version. But you see Keyshawn Vaughn being able to create in space. And he didn't get a lot of space for Vandy. And this play, I think, really accentuates his skill. You'll see right here, the hole that he was originally supposed to run in is filled by number 38. He shows off his lateral quickness to avoid him and also avoid number 23. He is able to break a tackle in the open field and fall forward for extra yards. That's everything I want to see from a running back. And, and I and I understand it's small. It's not a huge gain. It's not a sexy play by any means. But, but this is what I want to see. I want to see a running back create when there's not a lot of room. To be totally honest, this is probably one of the better opportunities that Keyshawn Vaughn had last season to create yards. And he was able to get a first down on this play for a reason. Unfortunately for Vandy, they, they weren't able to give him these kind of opportunities very often. I consistently see a player that's able to create for this Vandy offense. And while the opportunity isn't obvious, he in this situation specifically, uh, his hole is completely plug plugged up by a defensive tackle who's already beaten his man. He has to redirect to the outside, pull out his signature stiff arm, which you see a lot on film, and, and barrel ahead for two yards. He, he runs with incredible power, incredible balance, and when given the opportunity, he does have exceptional burst and explosion. And this last clip that I want to show you is actually from the 2018 Texas Bowl against Baylor, a, a game where he probably should have committed to the NFL after this season. This is a game where he ran for 243 yards and two touchdowns on just 13 carries. And this play is a great example of his explosiveness and ability to get to the second level. Now, granted, this was a much better Vandy team, and, and Baylor is a much worse opponent than the 2019 Vandy team that he played on and the Georgia team that, that he faced in the earlier clips. To be totally fair, I don't expect him to beat NFL caliber safeties at the third level and turn runs like these into touchdowns. But what I do expect is to see a situation where every man is blocked and he is able to quickly and efficiently hit his hole and explode through it to the next level. And as a running back, this is really where he sets himself apart from Ronald Jones. Keyshawn Vaughn is going to be the starting running back for the Buccaneers. I fully expect him to have 175 to 200 carries this season with Ronald Jones taking the passenger seat in the offense and, and getting somewhere in the range of 100 to 120 touches. Because I believe Keyshawn Vaughn is simply better. I think he has more tools in his toolbox as a pure runner. I think he's a little bit more explosive. And to be honest, I think he can create more with less than Ronald Jones can. But really where he sets himself apart to, from Ronald Jones is, is Keyshawn Vaughn's ability to catch the ball. Look at the difference between these two players catching the ball and turning upfield. 
Jones takes a half second to regroup after catching the ball while Vaughn effortlessly plucks the ball out of the air and turns upfield. It is subtle, but this is the thing that can truly differentiate these two players that are a similar type of running back. I, I truly believe Vaughn is going to get the nod over Jones in a lot of situations because he's going to be able to catch the ball from Tom Brady. And let's be honest, Tom Brady is going to be throwing to the running back position a lot more than Jameis Winston ever was. But before we end this video, there is one wild card option that I think could have significant value in this new era of Bucks football. And I apologize because I am going to absolutely butcher this name. Dare Ogamboli. I apologize. I don't know how to say his name. Easily the best pass catching back on the Buccaneers roster. Dare is James White. He will fit the role of a twitchy running back that Tom Brady has been using for years. Dare only has 11 carries last year, so there isn't enough film to really know if he'll be a serviceable running back between the tackles, but I think the addition of Tom Brady makes his role on this offense so much more valuable. He's a guy that I would absolutely target if you're in deep fantasy league or just have a spot late in your roster where you can afford to take a flyer on a player nobody is talking about. Dare is an explosive running back that can be valuable in that slot receiver slash third down running back role. He showed last year that he can line up in the slot and catch pretty well out of the backfield. And I think his role on this Buccaneers offense is only going to increase with Tom Brady in the driver's seat of this offense. But all right, guys, thank you so much for watching my breakdown of the Buccaneers uh, running back room. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one.